So welcome to the third day of SERI 2021. So today we'll start off with the uh, SE practice session, software engineering practice session. In the first part of the session, we have three papers by uh, Stanley and Ravindra and uh, Lakshmi. And then the second half, we'll have another set of three papers. So we'll get started with the first presenter, Stanley from uh, ISC uh, Bangalore. And uh, he's going to talk about his tool, Genesis, as part of this talk. Yeah, over to you, Stanley. Thank you, Raghu. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Stanley Samuel. I'm a PhD student at the Department of Computer Science and Automation, Indian Institute of Science. Uh, today, I'll be talking about my tool, Genesis, which is a scalable fixed point engine for maximal controller synthesis over infinite state spaces. This is joint work with Professor Deepak D'Souza and Professor Raghun Kamandur. And this work has been accepted in the tool demonstration track at uh, FSC 2021. So before I move on to uh, the details, um, uh, can you see the screen? Or... Yeah, sorry. So uh, to give a background of synthesis, uh, synthesis is actually a holy grail of software engineering and it has been a long standing challenging problem. This was first posed in its fundamental state by Alonzo Church in 1957, where he asked the question if you can synthesize a re recursive circuit, right? A circuit which uh, satisfies some specification. And the specification can be in some suitable logistic system and can be an extension of restricted recursive arithmetic. I wouldn't get into these details, but the point is that uh, since then, this has spurred a lot of uh, you know discoveries in this area. And uh, nevertheless, since the last 50 years, this area has been largely of theoretical interest due to the intractable uh, nature of the problem, right? Uh, in case of a large state space, like the complexity of the doubly ex exponential in nature. Um, you know, in, if you talk about infinite state spaces, then the problem can also be undecidable. However, in the 21st century, uh, there have been several tools in the last two decades, which actually broach the surface of practicality and does show empirically efficient solutions. Genesis is one of them, and uh, we show that Genesis is the first scalable tool in a specific class of problems. Um, to give you a background of reactive synthesis, which is the class of synthesis that we are looking at, uh, reactive synthesis is the synthesis of controllers, or it, which is a reactive entity. When I see a reactive entity, what I mean is that it continuously reacts with the environment, and uh, the behavior of the controller is specified using some temporal specification, which is declarative in nature. Consider an example. They're going to synthesize a simple bus arbiter, right? An arbiter grants access to the bus to several resources in the system, right? For example, a CPU. So if a CPU has access for a bus, it will send a request and the controller can, you know, decide whether to give a grant or not. So now we don't know what's the logic here in the center. Now, what if I want to synthesize this logic automatically? Um, consider it takes as input R, which is a proposition. It's a signal which uh, can uh, vary over zero and one and assume it can give an output as G. Now, if I have to constrain the behavior of the system by a temporal specification, which says whenever R is true, G must eventually be true. Now, this is a temporal specification because I'm talking about some future point in time. G must be true. Does not necessarily say which point in time. Um, which essentially, this specification essentially means that uh, every request should be granted. It should never be the case that, you know, uh, there's a request and and it's always say you know negation g this should never occur so a simple solution to this problem is always output g irrespective of the input right so if you look at the trace here if the controller plays first uh, say the controller gives you output g and input gives uh, the environment gives the input r and if you observe whatever the trace is you'll always get an output which is G. And so it will never, the, there will be the case will never occur that you have a request and it is never granted. This will never occur. So it's a very trivial solution to the problem, right? So this is just to motivate what reactive synthesis is all about. Um, so I just showed a simple example of a bus arbiter. In general, uh, there are several tools that have actually synthesized complete bus arbiters uh, for the AMBA uh, arbiter. Uh, as you can see, there are many such signals as input and output and the temporal specification becomes much more complex in such a situation. You can also synthesize cache coherence protocols uh, using a similar technique. Uh, but the crux is that you see that each of these signals are propositional in nature, which 
is why the state space is finite, albeit exponential, it's still finite. And there are many tools which solve this problem efficiently. In our talk, I will be sp speaking about um, infinite state systems. Um, for example, consider robot motion planning, right? Uh, which should avoid an obstacle, say, uh, this pillar here, right? Um, now, obviously, a robot, uh, uh, the position of a robot, for example, is continuous in nature, right? An angle of a robot is continuous in nature, which is why the state space can be infinite in such a situation. Consider the minimum backlog problem in wireless sensor networks. Now, uh, a wireless sensor network is a spatial distributed uh, uh, series of networks, uh, which actually senses certain information, say temperature, you know, position of a person. Now, uh, let's say, for example, you want to detect number of people walking in a room. Right now, now you cannot predict who comes when, right? It's, it's arbitrary, it's the environment. Um, now, this information can be stored in buffers, which are, which can be present in uh, each of these sensor networks. Now, obviously, these uh, this information is continuous in nature. And if, suppose, um, the information, the bucket buffer gets overflowed, you will lose information. So that there should be some controller or some entity that intelligently traverses this uh, sequence and uh, collects the information without overflowing the buffer, right? So this is what we call minimum backlog problem, where the backlog, that's the content in the network, uh, in the buffer, sorry, is minimized at any given point in time. Now, today we'll be focusing, the crux is I'll be focusing on abstraction of this problem, which is called as a Cinderella stepmother game, and we show how Tensor solves it efficiently. That's the crux of today's talk. Now, obviously, this problem is undecidable in general due to the infinite nature of the state space. So, what Genesis essentially does is it synthesizes a controller that adheres to a given temporal specification over a system with an infinite state space. We will see how this is done. So, before getting into that, um, we should know that reactive synthesis problems can be naturally modeled as a two player infinite game or an infinite state space. I won't get into the formalism, but I will try to get the intuition across in a very simple way. Consider you have a game with two players, right? Uh, the protagonist player is called the controller, whereas the antagonistic player is called as the environment. So the environment is considered the adversary and it's assumed to always, uh, you know, thwart all our plans or the controller's plans. Now, the state space is generated by a variable s. I will instantiate all this with an example in some time. But I'll uh, denote uh, and explain the terminologies first. Now, the winning condition that we're looking at is safety. So we have a safe region, which is uh, denoted by a predicate over this uh, over this uh, state space, right? Now, controller is allowed to make a transition. So this transition predicate here denotes the moves of the controller which is allowed, right? Which can change the values of the variable uh, state from S to S prime, and similarly for environment. So ENV is another transition predicate in this case. Now a play of the game is essentially a sequence of state changes, which are dependent on what moves the control and the environment plays in alternation. For example, let's assume I start with an initial state S, I let controller play, make a move and updates it to S prime. The environment can update this move and make it change to S double prime and so on. And you can see that it's an infinite sequence. And, so, and there are certain properties that uh, this trace should satisfy. And in this case, what we want this trace to satisfy is that at every point in time, the state should satisfy uh, the predicate G, which denotes the safe region. So the winning condition safety and the goal of gen is since it's a winning region. A winning region is the region from where uh, the controller can start the game and win against any possible move of the environment. And if such a winning region exists, we need to synthesize a strategy. Now I'll inst instantiate this with the example of a Cinderella stepmother game. And as I explained before, it's an abstraction of the minimum backlog problem. Now we have two players here, which is Cinderella and stepmother. Again, the transition predicates are the same. The state space in this case is five buckets, which are arranged in a circle. This, the, the buckets range over reals and, um, and what Cinderella can do, the, the rules of Cinderella is that it can empty any two adjacent buckets at a time. So for example, uh, I'll show this with, uh, with uh, I'll show the play of this game in some time, but the rule of Cinderella is that it can empty any two adjacent buckets. And thus there are five possible moves for Cinderella, right? Either it can empty B1, B2, or it can empty B2, B3 and so on. Environment or stepmother, can arbitrarily distribute one unit of water across the five buckets. Now, 
the safe region in this case is that B1, all buckets are bounded by an upper limit, right? We call it the overflow condition C. So the bucket cannot overflow. Uh, the, the goal is that Cinderella should ensure that this bucket never overflows and stepmother always tries to overflow this bucket. This is how the game is played. Now let's consider an example, a play of the game, right? Let's, let's consider that um, the value of C is two, that is the bucket size limit is two. Now the question is starting from the state here, can Cinderella always win against any move of the environment? Let's let's look at the situation. So for example, from this state, um, let's say Cinderella chooses to empty these two buckets here, makes it zero. So I have remaining three buckets, one. And let's say that um, stepmother, uh, now stepmother is allowed to arbitrarily distribute one unit of water across the five buckets anyhow. Now let's say the stepmother was not very intelligent and it, you know, kind of makes only fills the one uh, unit into this bucket. Now in the next step, when Cinderella plays, it can easily empty uh, these two buckets resulting in a state as follows. And if you think about it a bit more carefully, uh, you can uh, now from this point, stepmother can never win. I will leave that as an exercise. But stepmother could have made an intelligent decision. What it could have done was instead of putting one unit uh, here, it could have just, you know, put 1.5, 1.5 into alternate buckets, sorry, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 into alternate buckets. And now it's a checkmate for Cinderella because even if Cinderella empties these two buckets, there's 1.5 units left. And in the consequent step, stepmother can directly overflow that bucket by adding one unit into the into this bucket, right? So the safety condition is violated. The point is, starting from this state, Cinderella can uh, not always win, which is why this should not belong to the winning region, right? This is this state is not allowed as part of the winning region. Um, similarly, if you think about uh, uh, the limit, uh, you know, if you uh, think about limit two, uh, if I start with zero. You can uh, convince yourself that you know you can always win against uh, uh, the environment if you start from this state space for the bound two. Now, um, for the range less than two, there does not exist a strategy for Cinderella to always win against the environment. Um, due to lack of time, I will uh, not get into details of this, but. Um, Maybe I'll just talk about it in a second, right? Or for example, uh, the best possible move that's it. So in this case, it's zero, so it's useless. I mean, Cinderella can not do anything here. But generally, the best case for stepmother is to always, you know, um, put 0 0.5, 0 0.5 units into alternate buckets initially, right? Now, after this point, uh, you know, Cinderella can only empty, you know, for example, alternate buckets, right? Uh, uh, adjacent buckets. Now, after this point, what stepmother will keep doing is keep filling alternate buckets as follows, right? So, for example, it will first uh, try to make the um, adjacent uh, alternate buckets equal, and the remaining 0 0.5 it will distribute among them equally. So, you have 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 here, right? Now, if you see the sequence, this sequence tends to 2, but will never reach 2. And which means that if the value is strictly less than two, uh, environment can always overflow the bucket in some within some time. Uh, now the time can uh, it, it can take more time depending as, as it uh, as the value gets closer to two, that is one point nine 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 nine. It takes more uh, turns to for, for stepmother to empty the bucket, and this is what makes this problem challenging. Uh, and for automated synthesis tools, this is a very challenging range. So I'll come to this in a second, and I'll show you how Jensen solves this. So the crux, the, the crux was that uh, Cinderella can always win uh, or has a winning strategy when the bucket size is greater than or equal to two. And stepmother always wins, that is, or Cinderella does not have a strategy in this range 0 0.0 to 2.0. And this region, as I just explained, is a very challenging range for automated synthesis. And it was posed as a problem by Raji Valu some time back as a challenge to the software synthesis community. community. Um, I'll quickly run through the tool architecture, um, but I uh, refer, uh, I mean, encourage the readers to look at our paper for the same. What Genesis does is takes us input a game specification. A game specification is nothing but the environment move, a controller moves, 
and the guarantee, right? I'll just run through it in a second. For example, the environment move, right? What can the environment or stepmother do is it can arbitrarily distribute one unit of water across the five buckets. Now, for simplicity, due to lack of space in the paper, we have just used three buckets here, but technically it would be five buckets. So you have three uh, pre-states and post-states. You underscore denote the post-states. Now, what this tells me is that, so for example, uh, this tells me that B1 underscore plus B2 underscore plus B3 underscore is equal to B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus 1, which essentially models the condition that we have. And also that for each bucket uh, should be at least the previous version of it. So similarly for controller moves, you have three moves that you know either you can empty B1, B2 or B2, B3 and so on. Guarantee says that you know B1 is bounded by C. Anyway, um, so this input specification given as you know uh, a Python code, a uh, Python function definition. We do not have a formal language yet in this prototype version. Now, um, let's look at what happens is the game formulation. Uh, we formulate the game as follows, right? This is the formulation which says, the, uh, which, which essentially talks about set of states S such that there exists a move for controller to make a move and still stay in the safe region. And for all moves of the environment, uh, you are still in the safe region, right? And this one step move is um, core to our, the game formulation that we have. And if you look at this closely, this is nothing but the weakest precondition computation formulation in programming languages. Uh, I encourage the reader to look at the paper for more details. Um, the fix, and what we do is we use this formulation to compute the greatest fixed point. Now, this, this is a, a mu calculus formula, which is essentially uh, a modal a logic formula with uh, fixed point operators. Uh, this computes the greatest fixed point. Uh, solution, which is essentially a winning region. Um, the strategy synthesized by Genesis looks something like this, right? And now we have five moves for central as you can see. That is B1, B2, MT, MT, B1, B2, B2, B3, and so on. Now, under what conditions can these moves be played is what Gen Genesis synthesizes. Now, for example, if you look at uh, in this case, right, the first case, it tells me that when B1 and B2 is between 0 and 3, B3, B4, B5 is between 0 and 2. And B3 plus B5 strictly uh, is less than equal to 3. Under this condition, you can empty the bucket, right? Now, for example, let me just say B1, B2, B3, B4, and B5, right? Let's say B1 and B2 are, you know, 3, right? And let's say all of them can be 2, right? But the third condition tells me that B3 plus B5 should be uh, strictly less than equal to 3, right? B3 plus B5. So let me just say this should be 1.5 and 1.5. Now, starting from this state, it is easy to see that Cinderella can win the game because what it can do is just empty the strategy tells me empty B1 and B2. Okay, interesting. Make this zero. Now, after this point, if you observe, uh, by this for bucket size three, after this point, Cinderella, uh, stepmother can never empty the bucket, uh, can never overflow the bucket. You can try this out yourself, but this is sound. That's what I mean to say. Um, so the theorem is that uh, Genesis is guaranteed to synthesize a sound in maximal controller if it terminates. Um, soundness means that the controller can never lose starting from the states in the strategy. Uh, as we just saw, we just, I just verified it empirically. For the proof, you can check the paper. Um, maximality is the key contribution here, which says, states that no states from where the controller can upon initiation is missed, right? Like, for example, uh, what, what I'm saying is this is like the weakest condition under which this move can be played. I cannot weaken this further. So if I weaken this further, let's say I make this three, this would actually uh, consider a situation where um, environment will, you know, environment can win the game. And even if I just make it 2.1, environment can still win the game. I leave this as an exercise to the readers. Uh, the point to note is that since this is an undecidable problem, it's possible that uh, it may go into an infinite loop, but we have seen empirically that this does not occur, especially if we bound the safe region on both sides, right? Uh, this is very important to note. So it's important to uh, provide the safe region or G of S in an intelligent way so that the uh, so that the computation terminates. So in our experiments, we have not seen a case where it does not terminate. Um, so if that does not exist a solution, it returns unrealizable. In the experimental evaluation, we compare Genesis with um, 
the state of the art tools json vg constant simpsons for this is for the cinderella example by the way now uh, obviously this is a realizable case as we just discussed and this is the unrealizable case and the problem gets more difficult as it reaches 1.999 as i just explained that uh, it takes more time for environment to empty the bucket now for example if you look at um, now uh, it's also evident by the fact that it takes more iterations for genesis to solve the problem the interesting part to note is that uh, genesis vg is the only tool which synthesizes a maximal controller apart from genesis in the literature to the best of our knowledge and um, see the timing is uh, much worse than I mean, Genesis perform much better than uh, JSON VG in this case, even though it's since as a maximum controller. The other important point to note is that in this region, the scalable region, uh, in, that is, um, many times we solve in 31 seconds, but state of the art tools do not even uh, terminate, right? I mean, we expect Simpsons to also not terminate because it keeps getting tougher in this case. And Constance was also not able to terminate in, as claimed in their earlier paper. So the point is that um, Genesis, according to the best of our knowledge, is the first tool that actually scales well in this uh, case of infinite state systems over safety specifications. And uh, we also uh, compare this with uh, some simple benchmarks for uh, completeness. Uh, and this is compared against certain tools which uses learning based techniques, say decision tree learning, uh, automaton based learning, uh, even constraint based solving techniques. And we see that Genesis performs decently even in, in, in that situation for basic problems. In most cases, in some, in many cases, it even performs better. Uh, Genesis is a scalable fixed point engine for maximal control synthesis or infinite state spaces as discussed. The system model is essentially logical constraints, right? We put environment and controller moves as an input. Specification that, that we consider right now is safety, although future work, uh, which is currently in progress, is to actually extend it to Omega regular specification, which is much more richer than safety. Uh, the state space is infinite, and we also expect to cover finite state spaces. The Some key contrib uh, differences between other tools are that, you know, um, tools like constant require templates for the strategy, right? As you saw, uh, Genesis automatically synthesizes a strategy, strategy from scratch um, and does not require templates over the formula, whereas some tools do require templates. The fixed point is very intuitive to understand. It's elegant and is standard in the literature as well. Um, there's no dedicated solver required, unlike the other tools, Simpsons, JSON, VG, and Constance, which we believe is the reason why uh, there is uh, it takes some time to scale. Um, we are scalable unlike other tools. And one point which I've not mentioned here is that our controller size is smaller as compared to other tools as well. This is due to the fact that we use Z3's uh, simplification uh, techniques and as well as uh, Z3's quantifiable emission techniques, which is I, which I forgot to tell is one of the key reasons for scalability as well. So you can also try out our tool um, uh, at this following link and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Stanley, uh, for the talk. Uh, anybody has questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, you can use the chat or actually unmute and just speak up. Anyone? So, uh, Adi here, Stanley, just one question. Maybe it's more a clarification question. Sure, so, sure. Yeah, so you mentioned in the sound is that controller can never lose. Uh, starting from the I think, states in the strategy. So I'm yeah. wondering, what do you mean by states in the strategy? I mean, are, are these kinds of fixed states or or these can be states or what does that so, mean? So what I mean, uh, states in the strategy is that, oh, okay, I think I was not clear there. Uh, so we first synthesize a winning region, right? Uh, so the fixed point computation first, one second. So the winning region of the game it's essential solution to the fixed point equation, right? Now, this would ex tell me exactly which, uh, the set of states from which, you know, the Cinderella can win. For example, uh, as an example, if the output can look something like B1 less than or equal to 3.0 and, you know, B2 less than or equal to 0 0.0 and so on, right? So this predicate, this formula tells us the set of safe regions from where if Cinderella starts the game, no matter whatever move the environment plays, um, uh, 
Cinderella is bound to uh, win the game. That is always make the game stay in a safe, uh, safe region, right? Now, when I say states of the strategy, what I mean is that the conditions under which the moves can be played, right? So, for example, these are the states uh, or the formula under which the move can be played. Uh, so, that's what I mean by states of a strategy. Uh, is that clear or? I think, yeah. That, that that's now clearer to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it needs a bit more elaboration there. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Welcome. <clears throat> Any other questions? Anyone? Okay, maybe somebody will come up with that. In, in the meanwhile, uh, Stanley, just just one general uh, question. I mean, uh, not not specific to the presentation itself. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Given this is an SE practice session, maybe can you talk about where do you see potential applications of your tool? So, uh, as I showed you, maybe, maybe specific use cases would help. So, uh, one of the cases is that, as I showed you, right, the minimum backlog problem in wireless and networks, for example. So, that is one case where uh, we are looking, uh, like, which I just showed you is an abstraction of Cinderella Stepmother. Cinderella Stepmother is an abstraction of the wireless. The minimum backlog problem that is one situation so other examples are robot motion planning examples where you know you can encode the moves of the environment and the controller using logical constraints say for example you have a 2d state space where the robot and in the 2d state state space you can have certain obstacles right which should be avoided and you can say that these are points in the coordinate that should not be visited you can always represent them as predicates or you know, uh, an unsafe region. So that's one of the cases. I mean, there are I've I've seen some more interesting cases where you know this application of the such games to fuzzing as well, right? And I've not explored that yet. I still need to explore that. But there are work which you know takes care of that as well. Yeah, and also uh, yeah, synthesizing network controllers, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so. Uh, just again, I, I want you to just comment on this this whole idea of how uh, you know ML is invading the space of you know being able to predict uh, what are the possible states that a system can get into and get out of. Right, and here we are talking about safety and correctness in, in, a, in a literal sense. So, so there, there's a bit of a conflict in terms of where things are moving versus you know what we want to do ideally. Uh, yes. what, what are your comments on it? I mean, in general, yes, uh, this field is a bit nascent. Uh, it's it's technically still in, you know, just reach practicality, right? So the interesting point, if you ask the question, is it going to be used in practice anytime soon? I don't see that. It's more like a research problem in itself. And obviously, I mean, techniques will, you know, scale faster. I mean, it, the problem with infinite state spaces, even using techniques like, say, abstractions and stuff, uh, you can also, even in such cases, uh, tools do not really scale beyond a point. This, that this is what I've observed, uh, but nevertheless, from a uh, from a you know, research perspective, it's interesting, and that's what I would say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Anyone? So, so one more question, uh, uh, Raghu, from me. So, uh, so Stanley, can you go to the last slide? I had some question about the template part. Um, Sorry, uh, this one. Uh, yeah. So you think that no external templates required? I mean, is that really because? Uh, you've got very few combinations uh, of moves that are possible. Uh, okay, so in, in general, uh, if I were to look at synthesizing, uh, synthesizing various other combinations of states, conditions, uh, and, 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 and possibilities like that, mm -hmm. do you think templates, uh, uh, because the, then the state space is going to increase tremendously is what I thought. So I, I maybe I, I did not get quite clearly what you mean by no external templates are required. Is it just because of the problem that you chose or is it uh, because of the generic nature of the solution approach that you have? Yeah, and more specifically, yes, it's the generic nature of the solution approach that you have, but it's in comparison with the tools like consent, which I have uh, focused, right? Uh, so. For example, if you look at Consynth, uh, which is a tool in Popular 2014, um, they do require uh, templates for the strategy itself. Like if you want to synthesize a strategy, you have to say, uh, for example, if I go back here, you can say, uh, you have to say something like B1, B2, uh, say three would be question mark, for example, and it would synthesize constants, uh, synthesize a constant for you. You got it? So 
here this predicates are synthesized automatically. That's what I mean. And again, this is purely in context to the previous tools, right? Now, as you said, yes, uh, if it increases, I do not know the answer, right? If the complexity of the problem increases, I do not know the answer to that, but I would be more than happy to discuss this offline, like to know uh, where you're coming from, right? Okay, okay, sure. Yeah. All right, time for one more question, if at all. Okay, so thank you, Stanley. Thanks for the talk. Thank you. So we will move to the next talk by Ravindra. So Ravindra, are you there? Can you, if you could just un share your screen. Uh, Raghu, quick uh, this thing. You can start and stop the recording so that they are separate uh, videos. If you oh, okay. come back. Okay, okay. 